Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Spinsterella, get your goth on with this dark and sexy romance from Sean James. Spinsterella, now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. I was at home watching the news when I heard about the bombings in Paris. Now, I express my condolences to the families of those people out in Paris who lost loved ones, and I'm very sorry for all your loss. And as I was watching the news about these Paris bombings, and they talked about how this was the work of ISIL, the terrorist group, because I refuse to call them ISIS because they have nothing to do with the goddess at all, and I refuse to sully her name, the name of this dysfunctional organization. I thought about, you know, the history of terrorism over the last 40 years and how, in many ways, it parallels a lot of what goes on here with these pro-black, red, black, and green Negroes. Well, just like the terrorists, your pro-black, red, black, and green Negroes are always talking about how they want to have this revolution, how they want to make change, and how they are so against white society. However, when you look at their actions, you know, everything that they say that they are supposed to be about, you know, contradicts what's in their own rhetoric. And when you look at your ISIL organization, I see the same, you know, hypocritical contradiction. These people say that they want to create an Islamic state, yet they're always in other people's countries or they are always trying to attack white people and they always think that they have to get the attention of white people and that shows us that you know their argument about wanting an Islamic State is totally you know illogical if you want an Islamic State you go and build the Islamic State you don't keep going and attacking white people that you say that you hate so much when I look at countries like the Asian countries like China, Japan, after they had, you know, conflicts like World Wars, they didn't focus on trying to win the approval of people they say they didn't like. They went out and built themselves an economic infrastructure that allowed them to compete with the rest of the world. But meanwhile, we look at this Islamic State, and it looks like they, like Al-Qaeda, live to get the attention of the same white man that they hate so much. And this is the same behavior pattern that I saw with your pro-black, red, black, and green Negroes. They also talk about how much they hate white supremacy, how much they hate the white man, and they spend most of their time doing things to get the attention of the very same white man they say that they hate so much. And if all of these groups say that they hate the white man so much, you would think they would spend more time building their own businesses and infrastructure like the Chinese do and the Japanese did and the Vietnamese did instead of you know trying to win his attention and get his attention because all the tools were there I mean a lot of people don't know that before 9-11 your Al-Qaeda organization had a good strong foothold in Afghanistan and they had the opportunity to build economic trade partners with the US with the Russians and many others to build their own country but instead of taking the time and doing the work of building their own country, they decided to plan 9-11. What was 9-11 really about? I have no idea. I mean, I think about all those lives lost, and everybody says that it was supposed to be an attack on the West, but if you're supposed to be about building this ideal Islamic state so that you can have your own ideal Islamic economy, wouldn't you be focused more on that? And that's what shows me that you know, a lot of these, you know, terrorist groups remind me, again, so much of these pro-blacks who talk about they want to build a black community, but again, when you look at their actions, everything is about winning the approval of this white man. And this is an imaginary white man. This is not a real white man. This is an idea that is inside most people's heads. That's why I said a long time ago that the religion of the world is not, you know, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, um, any of the other so-called religions out there. None of these people are working towards a relationship with God. What they're really working towards is a the religion of white supremacy and the religion of this white God. This is what many people are following and pursuing unconsciously. 
if you look at their behaviors, if you look at their actions, this is what people, you know, want to get the attention of. And this is what the terrorists, just like the pro-blacks, want to get the attention of. They want to get the attention and the approval of this white god, and they want to be the number one in his eyes. Just like your pro-blacks here, they want to be the elite group that represents all the black people in the face of this white god. And the same thing, you know, I think in the Islamic countries, these people want to be, you know, the number one in the eyes of this white man. And everybody wants to be, you know, not understanding that this white man that everybody is chasing after is a false god, he's a false ideology, and, you know, he's a social construct that is made up in mostly, primarily in people's minds. He's not a real person. And as long as people follow this imaginary construct, they give away all of their personal power, you know, and they wind up never achieving what the true living God has for them to achieve in this world. And I look at the, the sad situation that happened in Paris, and then with the whole Charlie Hebdo, and people say it's about religion, but it's really not about really the religion of your Islam. It's about the religion that many of these pro-blacks follow, which is the religion of this false white god that many people follow but will not admit that they truly do follow because in their eyes god is white and they want to win the attention of this white god they want to win the approval of this white god and they want to be the number one in that white god's eyes and that false religion that they're following they think is going to get them somewhere but if you really think about it you go if you really wanted to build your whatever you wanted to build, you just go and build it. You wouldn't just keep going to attack people, innocent people who have absolutely nothing to do with the economic, with the political and social situations that are going on. I mean, the people in 9-11 had nothing to do with what went on in the Middle East. The people in Paris had nothing to do with what happened in the Middle East. And even many of the employees at Charlie Hebdo had nothing to do with what went on in the Middle East. And even in the 70s, when these pro-blacks were out here, some of them were calling themselves killing cops and stuff. They had nothing to do with this. And one of the other things that I noticed with, your, with these organizations is, for all the talk about, you know, and all the acts of violence, you never see anybody, you know, coming up with an economic plan. That's something that I've seen, you know, with your Al-Qaeda's, your ISIL's, and even your pro-blacks. Many of these people have no economic platform or no economic model. They're always you know, talking about how they want to build this grand, ideal place for people. But when you break down the nitty-gritty of them and you start talking about economics, these people are pretty much give you a blank look. Um, I noticed, like, a couple of years ago in Egypt when they ousted Hosni Mubarak and, you know, the people came up with this whole, we're going to create a democracy and all this stuff. Again, the whole thing fell apart because... Nobody understood how economics works. And the whole thing with, I look at a lot of these terrorist organizations and these pro-black organizations, and the same thing. Without economics, you can't run a country. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people just don't understand. They think they can, you know, create this, um, create this, you know, ideal state based on a construct like religion, but, you know, you cannot run a government on religion. Governments run on money and you need money to maintain services and to take care of people and to build revenue so you need an economic base and this is what you know truly lacks a lot of these people they have rhetoric and propaganda and ideals but when you start breaking down all that rhetoric propaganda and ideals and get down to what really runs a country which is money and economics you realize that you know these people have no idea what they're doing because I look at what happened in Egypt, the country had to go back to the military running it because all the idealistic people couldn't run an economy. We need economic trade partners, business partners, and political partners in order to maintain a country's infrastructure and make sure that the country's resources are allocated in an effective way. And a lot of people, especially people who are in their late teens, early 20s, and even up to their early 30s, they really don't understand the subtle politics that is needed to go transpire in order to make sure that those resources continue to be distributed on a regular basis and maintain a strong economy. A lot of them, again, they only, they're very young and they see things from a very idealistic way and they're thinking about 
things like, you know, like when Barack Obama came out with that change campaign, they're thinking of things from that perspective. They're not understanding the underpinnings and the, com and the subtle complexities that are required for nation building and also maintaining a nation's infrastructure. And what really is really dysfunctional about the whole concept um, that a lot of these pro-blacks and a lot of these terrorist organizations have is they all think that when they create their ideal country that everybody is going to think the same way and everybody is going to agree. And the whole concept of monolithic thought is a thing that I believe is going to undermine many of these terrorist organizations because even if they were able to build their countries, the whole idea that everybody is going to agree based on whatever religious concept that they have is going to be their own under undoing because if, you, if I took a Koran or I took a Bible and I handed it to two different people and I showed them a passage in there, two different people are going to give me two different opinions or two different interpretations of that very same text. And to have these kind of people, you know, using religion to try to control a government when you have municipal services that need to be um, distributed and economic resources that need to be distributed, you're going to have a bit of a problem because in order for you to maintain your business infrastructure and on your economic infrastructure, you can't have people, you know, coming at you with everybody has to think the same way. I mean, in order to get things done, there has to be the concept of compromise and people, you know, have to agree to disagree. And when you have people coming from a religious perspective, oftentimes they can't agree to disagree. In many cases, <coughs> they get heated, they get emotional, and they get personal. And because they get personal, you know, political goals can't be achieved because most political goals, they get achieved through compromise. And when you have people in a religious situation, everybody believes that their idea is right, their vision is right. And when everybody's thinking that everybody has to think the same way, the entire political process comes to a halt. And this is why many theocratic straight states pretty much fall apart because everybody believes everything has to be a monolithic thing. And this is why, you know, the pro-black movement has pretty much stalled and not made any progress is because they believe everything has to follow a monolithic process and that everybody has to agree and everybody has to agree to do everything one way. When sometimes the best solutions come from people agreeing to disagree or disagreeing and then coming from a better conclusion or a different perspective from hearing all of the disagreements. And that's something that, you know, many people can't do in a theocracy because in a theocracy we have a group of people who want to control the thoughts of everybody and they want to make sure everything goes in a monolithic fashion. Everybody has to think the same way, everybody has to follow the same ideals, Everybody has to, you know, follow things in the exact same way. Everybody has to do things in the exact same way. And that's something that has been proven. You can't really, it doesn't really work well within economic systems, again, where you need compromise. And I look at, again, your ISIL, your pro-blacks, and I see so many parallels to them. And I see, you know, while your pro-blacks haven't committed, you know, acts of terrorism here, I see a lot of their rhetoric and stuff sounding extremely similar to your ISIL in talking about, you know, how they want to, you know, how much they hate the white man and how they don't like the white man. Again, yet you are always going to the same white man looking for attention and approval. But when I look at your Asian counterparts, who have suffered just as much in the Japan, who have suffered just as much under the umbrella of white supremacy. Instead of them trying to continue to pursue these people that they say that they hate so much and continue to try to get their attention, instead they just went out and built a better economy that allowed them to compete against them. And instead of them looking for that approval, they approved of themselves, they valued themselves, and they appreciated what was great about them. And when you look at the entire, you know, all the Asian countries, they aren't sitting here trying to go and blow somebody up or talking about how much they hate the, these other countries. No, they're saying that we're going to make our own stuff 
and we're going to compete on and make better a better economy and have people coming to us instead of us going to them. They understand, you know, I think a little bit more better about national pride than your African Americans or many of these people who are part of these terrorist organizations. They they understand that if I want to build, if I want this country, I'm going to go build it myself and then create something better so I can have my, I can be the one dictating the terms of trade, commerce, and resources. But when I look at, you know, many of the Asian countries, they really aren't as emotionally attached to religion as many of your African Americans or many of the people in the Islam, of these Islamic countries. They're not as emotionally you know, attached to religion. Um, in China, they pretty much outlaw religion, pretty much. In Japan, they have a wholly different religious system. In many of the other Asian countries, it's, it's, again, it's the same thing. But they often focus mostly on building, following education, economics, infrastructure, things like that. And then when the U.S. and other countries come to them, they have to deal with them on their terms. Whereas these other people, they're going at it in a reverse fashion where they commit these random acts of violence, kill lots of people, get lots of attention, but at the end of the day, nobody wants to deal with them at, on any terms whatsoever because they're really not bringing anything to the table except emotion, and emotion really does not get people to listen to you. All it does is lead to more violence and you know, no real constructive solutions overall. Instead, it's just, you know, you blew up and killed a bunch of white people, and then the white people go back and then kill up a bunch of you, and then nothing's really getting accomplished. And, and I believe, you know, President Barack Obama and the rest of the world is coming at ISIL from the wrong perspective. They're thinking about, you know, coming at them with a combat situation, but you also need a, you know, diplomatic situation as well. You need to start, you know, breaking down things to people in these Islamic countries about economics, politics, and, you know, business so that they can understand, you know, that the leaders of this organization don't have their best interests at heart. And I believe if you came at them with that type of information using logic and reason, you might get more people on your side because I look at it this way, everybody's coming at them with emotions and buying into their rhetoric and the only way to, to really defeat, you know, terrorist organizations which really usually run on propaganda, um, rumors and half-truths is to present facts with logic and reason and you really need a platform based on that and when you start talking about, you know, hardcore subjects like economics, economic systems, I believe people will really start looking at, you know, this organization and its ideals and start looking at it and going, thinking for themselves, saying that, you know, all the stuff that they want to do is completely illogical and, you know, it's just not possible, especially if you start talking about heavy into economics and how you need trade partners and political partners and economic partners in order to run a country because, again, a religious state really can, can't run on religion because you need compromise in order to run a country. You need people who are willing to work together whether they, on what they agree on, not based on one person's monolithic thought. And this is something that, you know, people really need to think about in their approaches to combat ISIL because ISIL really needs to be combated based on, again, logic and reason. Because if you buy into the rhetoric and start, you know, shouting back at them, they have won. But if you combat them with facts, logic, reason, and, you know, break down every point that they make with, or present them with counterpoints that are truthful, that will totally undermine the organization and completely collapse it. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.